Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Tevek Juster and today we compare different plastic welding techniques to each other. Okay, let's have a look at the today's content. So we'll start with an overview of the different welding uh, techniques of plastics and then we will discuss ultrasonic welding, laser welding and vibration welding. And in the end we will compare all these three uh, welding techniques to each other. Okay, here you can see now an overview of the different welding techniques of plastics. So we have always starting on the left with a type of heat input to melt the plastics and then to join it. So the heat input can be heat conduction, which then results in heated coil welding. We can have convection, where we have hot gas and extrusion welding. We can have radiation as heat source which is then uh, resulting in laser welding, or we can have friction, which generates inner friction and with that ultrasonic welding or outer friction, where we have then vibration welding. And it's already in the orange boxes marked. So laser welding, ultrasonic and vibration, we will discuss now closer. Okay, let's continue with ultrasonic welding. Uh, with, the, with a short description of the working principle and the advantages and disadvantages. So ultrasonic welding in general is a re uh, reliable and very cost-effective assembly technique um, and through a sequence of components. So through the power supply converter to booster to horn to actuator it delivers a high frequency, low amplitude, uh, mechanical vibration with a downward force onto the parts. So this produces inner frictional heat um, on the and on the interface we have a melting of the parts and while the, the polymer is melting we have also a, a downward force which comp compresses the joint together to receive a strong bond. Frequencies are in the range of 15 to uh, 40 kilohertz and um, in average most devices uses 20 kilohertz. So what are the advantages? We have a quick drying time and fast welding process. So this is in one second uh, done. It's a easy automation and also has low uh, purchasing costs of the devices. We can have a clean and precise joint and all of our weld site is also clean. There are no post-processing steps and it has also a low thermal impact on the materials. However, when we look now at the disadvantages, we have a, we need uh, specially designed joints, so we need to have a tip contact during welding and uh, it's also limited joint size. So uh, usually parts in the range of 250 to 300 millimeters are possible. The equipment is not so expensive, however, we have some capital investment for the fixtures of, of the parts itself. And um, it's more restricted to lab joint types. Okay, let's continue with laser welding. So in laser welding, Laser welding uses a, as a heat source provided by a, a, a light source in the range of 780 to 918 nanometer range. There is no vibration uh, or relative part movement needed. It's you only need a transmissive upper polymer layer and a, a, a absorptive uh, absorption layer, and so. Uh, the, the the laser will go through the transmissive layer and uh, will be absorbed uh, by the lower layer which created the heat and the heat will melt the, the plastic on the interface and then join it together. So what are the main advantages? We have here a decrease in costs compared to other joining methods and we expose the parts also to minimal stresses. However, we have high joint strength 
and uh, complex shapes are possible. It's a very clean process and can be done with high precision. And also welding of different components, parts is possible. Disadvantages, so we have a higher initial investment for the device itself and for the whole clamping fixtures. We have some limitations in the part thickness and geometry, so usually part thickness up to maximum 3, 4 mm are feasible. And also the upper layer as the selected polymer must be optically suited to, to be transmissive. Um, and uh, we need to have tight part tolerances. So when you think of injection molding, to really uh, um, prevent here shrinkage warpets so that you have a good contact of the two parts which will be molded. Okay, let's continue with vibration welding. Vibration welding in general is the close cousin to ultrasonic welding. However, this technique uses a reciprocating a linear motion and not a vertical motion compared to ultrasonic. Plus, uh, what is the same is that we have a downward pressure to join the two parts. The frequencies are uh, much lower compared to ultrasonic welding. So here we range in between 100 to 240 hertz. However, the amplitude is larger the with this friction vibration welding we can also make uh, good big part joints and more robust joints as well but let's have a closer look at the advantages so fast cycles are possible um, as previously already mentioned small medium and large parts are also possible complex part geometries are no problem and we have a wide range of materials which we can join together. It's also a low flash sealing technique and it uh, offers also reliable part to part seals. Disadvantages, so we have, we have some limitation in the part shapes, so preferable circular sh shape is needed uh, for, for proper rotation and particulates are possible. So there you have to take care um, if you want to use such a vibration welding in healthcare, in medical applications where a clean room is, is needed. Okay, let's continue now with a comparison of the welding techniques. So first, uh, what you can see here on the table on the right lower corner is the key. So green always means recommended, yellow limited, and red not recommended and gray is not applicable and here uh, we have listed the key selection factors so we have amorphous semi-crystalline polymers so so mainly all material types olefins composites thermoplastic elastomer thermoplastic films thermoplastic fabrics and the free discussed techniques so laser welding ultrasonic welding and vibration welding as you can see laser welding is for most of the uh, polymer classes uh, suitable uh, as well as um, ultrasonic welding where we have to be careful here are some limitation in the semi-crystal polymers and also with composites and also thermoplastic elastomers as you can imagine when you uh, uh, the here this is it's not feasible um, to to weld such materials higher with vibration and laser welding it's possible okay now here we have as a key selection factors the more part related factors so um, small parts large parts thin walls long unsupported walls internal welds complex geometries again with the same uh, color code and here we see that uh, laser welding and ultrasonic welding are are uh, the, um, you can realize the same um, part geometries and uh, part factors however with vibration welding we have to be more careful with thin walls and long unsupported walls 
Okay, if you want more information on polymer engineering topics, I highly recommend my blog, find out about plastics.com, as well as my online training courses on material, polymer material selection. I will link you both the blog and the online courses in the description below. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Till next time, bye!